we've come to Seven Stains Trail Centre in Maybe to talk you through some of the physics involved in mountain biking. There's some really interesting physics principles uh, that hopefully are going to be useful for your GCSE or A-level physics, whichever one you're studying. Gorilla Physics! Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about how the brakes work, and the brakes have got two things, and both uh, principles of physics are designed to multiply the force. If you think about it, we're trying to stop quite a heavy bike with just our index finger, just one finger. And so that means, well, imagine trying to stop a bike coming down at that kind of speed, trying to stop that with your one finger. Well, there's no way you've got enough force in that finger to actually stop the bike. But you can do enough work, and that's the key thing. Okay, so what's happening here, first of all, I've got these levers. And these levers are force multipliers. They use the principle of moments. So by having a pivot here at the end of the brake and uh, your effort here on the end of the brake lever, you're actually doing a larger force here, which is the piston of the brake. Now, that multiplies it. The ratio of the distance here to pivot to the effort divided by the distance from the pivot to the load is the ratio in which the force is multiplied. So let's say this looks to me about sort of maybe 10 times the distance from pivot to effort as it is from pivot to load. And in doing so, well, the force on my little finger is immediately increased by a factor of 10. Okay, so this is the pivot here. This is where the effort's going to be right on the end. And I want it to be just the little finger so I can still grip the handlebars with the rest of my hand. Uh, this is where the effort's going to be, and that looks to me like maybe 10 times the distance from pivot to effort as it is to pivot to the load here. So in doing so, I'm multiplying that force by 10. Okay. The next force multiplier is the hydraulic system. That, lo that load is compressing a liquid, which is in, in all of this uh, section here, all this piston section here, all throughout the fluid, and all the way back to the rear brake or front to the forward brake. And because there's a smaller area here, the piston here has a smaller area here, then, and this down, the piston down here on the actual load of the brake, then again the force is multiplied in that ratio. So if this piston is four times smaller than this one, then the force at the, on the actual brake pads is four times that. So immediately you can imagine, I've taken my little finger force, I've multiplied it by 10, then I've multiplied by that by 4. So I've got 40 times the force on my fingers onto the brake pads. And that's how come that index finger can stop that front wheel. So if this piston here is where I'm doing the load, and I've already multiplied that force by the, um, by the lever system, then this piston compresses a fluid in this section here, and through this tubing, all the way down here to the piston on the brake pads. Okay, the pressure throughout that is going to be equal. So pressure is a force divided by an area. So if I have a, a larger area there, then I get um, a larger, I need to have a larger force um, out here for the same pressure in this fluid. So that, mean, that does mean that the, the calipers won't move as far as the piston at the top, but the, in, crucially the force is multiplied. Okay, so um, this disc here, is what the brake pads here are pinching on, okay, there with that larger force that I've talked about. And in doing so, we're going to get quite a lot of friction. And it's that friction force which actually stops the bike. And we need to know that friction force is converting that kinetic energy of the bike coming down the hill into heat energy and some sound energy you'll see, especially as my brakes make a lot of noise. Um, now, so all of that kinetic energy needs to be converted into heat. And actually, if you come down a long descent and you actually touch the brake pads, you'll see they're actually roasting hot and you can actually burn yourself on them. And that's why, as you can see, they've got all these holes in the brake pads. That ho those holes are there to actually help the brake pad cool down. So we want to actually get rid of that energy as quickly as possible so we can replace it with more heat energy and we can stop the bikes um, more efficiently. And the sun's come out now, a uh, typical Scottish day. Um, we were just having hail. Now I'm too hot because of the sun. Anyway, talking about heat, but well, why do we now have disc brakes on mountain bikes instead of having the brakes on the rim as they used to all be? Well, I've talked about that kinetic energy being transferred into heat, 
and maybe you can guess what's going to happen if I heat that rim up too much. Well actually the problem was in these long descents they were having so much heating effect that they were actually bursting the tyre because the gas in the tyre was getting too hot and therefore the pressure incre increasing and then the air blowout. So um, these are kind of middle sized kind of disc brakes, sort of perfect for all mountain stuff but in the Alps we're doing a lot of downhill descents with much larger disc brakes to allow you to dissipate that heat energy more rapidly or in a cross country you want a bit smaller because you want them a bit lighter. So it's all a trade off. This video is part of a little mini series of the physics of mountain biking so if you like this video then please check out the rest and if you did like the video if I earned your subscription please subscribe to Gorilla Physics. There will be plenty more past papers help for your physics GCSEs and A levels.